Good morning everyone and welcome to the service from St Mary's um, in Great Budworth. I'm Jenny McKay, I'm the curate at St Mary and All Saints and I'm also the Reverend Vet and you're very welcome to the morning service. I see we've got um, a few people who've introduced themselves on the countdown. Uh, so hello to Leslie Hopkinson and hello to Jean Davies. Lovely to see you joining us. As you can see, um, I've got quite a nautical shirt on this morning and that's because we've got quite a water-based theme as you will hear as we go through the service. Um, our gospel reading is about Jesus walking on the water and then I'll be reflecting a little bit on how we weather the storms in our lives. So definitely a very water-based theme for the rest of the service. So just to get us going, uh, we're going to move on now to our first hymn. So you will have the words and I think you're going to recognise some people that you see in the images that are accompanying the hymn words. So fill your hearts with joy and gladness is the first hymn. So join in at home. I'm sure you recognise quite a few faces on those images. We've had a lot of beautiful sunny days and I had the great pleasure to go over to one of our parishioners, Mrs Caroline McGuigan, earlier in the week and I was able to film her in her beautiful garden so she is reading the gospel reading for us this morning and it's Matthew 14 verses 22 to 33. Then he made the disciples embark and go on ahead to the other side while he sent the people away. After doing that he went up the hillside to pray alone. It grew late and he was there by himself. The boat was already some furlongs from the shore battling with a headwind and a rough sea. Between three and six in the morning, he came to them, walking over the lake. 
When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were so shaken that they cried out in terror, it is a ghost. But at once he spoke to them, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter called to him, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you over the water. Come, said Jesus. Peter stepped down from the boat and walked over the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the gale, he was seized with fear and beginning to sink, he cried, save me, Lord. Jesus at once reached out and caught hold of him and said, why did you hesitate? How little faith you have. They then climbed into the boat and the wind dropped and the men in the boat fell at his feet exclaiming truly you are the son of god so imagine the scene jesus and his disciples are separated he's alone on the mountain having a peaceful retreat with God. And there in the thick of it, on the water, battling it against a raging gale. The waves lash against the boat. They've limited visibility and Jesus comes to them. He joins the disciples in the worst period of their lives. But as they see him coming across the water, they are even more scared. Not only are they worried about the storm, but then they think that it's a ghost walking on the water. But Jesus cries out, it is I. And Peter in pulse of his ever says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. But what's all that about? Why is Jesus being asked by Peter that he can help him walk on the water? Is it a test? Or is he saying it more like, Ah, now that I see you're not a ghost, I trust you to help me do something I know I can't do on my own. Or is it a question of trust? We weren't there, so I guess we'll never know. But test or trust, Peter gets out of the boat and he doesn't get very far until Jesus grasps his hand and then Jesus tells Peter off and says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? This story, it's all about faith in Jesus, even when floods, bushfires, viruses and explosions rage and threaten our security and our lives. I have heard some scientists on the story saying that it's nonsense. If it was such a stormy, dark night, then the boat was probably thrown to shore and the disciples really just saw Jesus standing near the shore at the water's edge and he just gave Peter a hand onto the shore. I'm not sure that it really matters though, it's all an affirmation of Jesus with us and our faith in him to see us through those difficult times that threaten to overwhelm us. The key to faith and fullness of life in Christ is to follow Peter's example and be willing to step out of that boat, out of your comfort zone and head into the troubled waters of the world to proclaim Jesus, his mercy, love and truth as exemplified by Jesus. Being a disciple is both a risky and exciting business, but that is what God calls us to do and to be. And God assures us that if we get out of the boat, we can count on Jesus accompanying us every step of the way. William H. Willimon, Professor of the Practice of Christian Ministry at Duke Divinity School, probably put it best in a sermon entitled, How Will You Know If It's Jesus? He says, if Peter had not first ventured forth, and had not listened to Jesus and walked on the water, he would never have taken such a great opportunity to recognise Jesus and to be rescued by Jesus. 
And I wonder if too many of us are merely paddling about in the shallows of our faith and therefore have too few opportunities to test and really deepen our faith. The story today implies if you want to be close to Jesus and you want to venture forth out on the sea, you have to make sure that you trust his promises and reach out through risk and venture. Getting out of the boat with Jesus is very risky, but it's exciting and fulfilling and leads you to a life of fulfillment. The Gospel reading today invites us to do just that. Let us pray. The response to Lord in the storms of life is hear us and help us. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you are with us in troubled times. You are ready to hear our cry and connect to our injuries. Lord, help us not to be afraid, but to put our trust and hope in you. May we ever rejoice in your love and care. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord, you have created us out of love and for your love. And we ask for your protection in the troubles of life. Bless all Christians who are struggling against great odds. And we pray for those suffering from persecution, violence or ridicule. We bring those to you in their troubled times. Lord, in the storms of life, hear us and help us. We give thanks for the works of the mission for seafarers and those who go out in lifeboats. We pray for all whose work is upon the sea and ask your blessing upon fishermen, merchant seamen and the Royal Navy. We remember today all who are caught up in storms, earthquakes, floods or droughts. And we also remember those affected by the deadly explosion in Beirut. Let us pray for the victims and their families and pray for Lebanon itself. That with the effort of everyone in society, political and religious, it may face this tragic and painful moment and with the help of the international community, overcome the serious crisis it is experiencing. Lord, in the storms of life, hear us and help us. We bring to you all in our church community and give thanks this morning for all in our great Budsworth and Antrobus parishes. Take care of us all as we move into the world again. And we bring you in a moment of silence, those who are ill and in need of our prayers. Lord, in the storms of life, hear us and help us. Lord, stand by us when the last great storm seeks to overwhelm us and we feel that we are sinking beneath the waves. Help us to know that you will not let us perish but have everlasting life. And to you we commit all our loved ones departed. May they rejoice in your presence and in your grace. And we bring all our prayers together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the collect for today, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who did send thy Holy Spirit to be the life and light of thy church, open our hearts to the riches of thy grace 
that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, nigh and for ever. Amen. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect you in the image of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go into the world, walk in God's light, show God's love and reflect God's glory. Thanks be to God. Amen.